All right, everyone, we're back with another read. This is being pre-recorded for the week. And I'm going to start off again by looking at the energies through my Denise Lynn deck, and then um, we're going to go into our beautiful tarot cards here, okay? So let's see what the energies are, because I really do feel as we head towards the, the full moon, we're really in for a very empowering time here. We're in for a, a point of completion. I feel like a lot of things have happened throughout the holiday season and definitely a trigger from the new moon in Capricorn. And we're now being asked to close out some of those things that we've um, become aware to and now find a way to move forward. So how we can push the envelope even more towards our own healing, okay? Lord, I have not been able to figure out this lighting, but we'll get there. Okay, so we've got Adventure. Security and release. The bottom of the deck is going forward. So again, the energy here is moving us forward into 2022 with new opportunities, new new adventures and new experiences. The adventure card to me is very fool-like energy. So I'm seeing that we're being asked to trust, um, being asked to really dip into this um, energy of uh, taking a leap of faith. And really sort of getting into the day-to-day -day flow, um, taking it day by day, situation by situation, energy by energy. Um, you know, when you wake up in the morning, you have a cup of coffee and you take on that day and you're just focused on whatever it is that you need to accomplish and you feel great by the end of the day. You're not planning for the, the seven, eight days ahead because that can stress you out. That can um, uh, disalign you. That could also take you away from your center and from the present moment. So I'm seeing with adventure here, we are being asked to really dip into the present because there's adventure all around us. There's, um, you know, cooking breakfast can be a creative release. Um, I know that making the bed and having very neat corners is um, uh, just a feeling of perfection. I know that I can't achieve perfection as a person because perfection is impossible. We're all just so fallible as humans, and that's the beauty of being human. But I like to achieve a certain level of perfection, and I feel complete when I'm doing those hospital corners. And I feel I feel great. It's these little moments in the day that just kind of take me away from the stress of a deadline or anything heavy that I'm dealing with. So that all gives me this idea of adventure. You know, going for a walk, discovering a new trail, discovering a new park, discovering a new landscape, watching a new movie. It's all about... Um, getting away from the everyday while still being in your everyday, you know, like movies are an escape, a form of escape. It kind of gives you hope. It um, hits at your emotions. It gives you a chance to kind of break away from the mundane daily tasks that you have and still give yourself an opportunity to feel and really express. And listen, in today's day and age, we're facing another lockdown here in Canada, but um, we, we've been in that situation multiple times. So we're forced to almost discover um, new areas and new ways of having an adventure and that's part of your spiritual journey too so make sure you do that okay where's my coffee and have a sip <clears throat> i'm also seeing security and release what's at the bottom of the deck here we've got empress at the bottom of the deck and this bottom of the deck has two of cups so i'm seeing that you know in order to really get into a place of creativity, to partner with people in creative endeavors, to really step into our energy of manifestation, we're being asked to have a sense of security in letting go of the things that no longer serve us. You know, letting go is hard. Letting go, letting go is not giving up. I just want to identify that right now because a lot of people think that, you know, letting go of a partner, of an ex or whatever it may be, is just giving up and um, kind of thinking that it will never come back again. The glare is distracting me. Um, but really, letting go is just kind of saying, I have no expectations for the time being. I'm going to just let things be, and I'm going to let the universe take over. And in that, I will just let go of control. <clears throat> that is the beauty that I see here in this release. But the rest of you are really being challenged to take stock of what it is that you're still painstakingly attached to, that you're not letting go of, because that's what's holding you back from really stepping into your Empress energy here, okay? Your Empress energy is that energy where you don't chase, you just attract. You understand that you have the power to manifest and you're going to really nurture and cultivate that power by simply being. There's a security in being. And in that state of just being, going with the flow, there's a security in letting go of what no longer serves you as well. That's important, okay? Release doesn't need to be this anxiety-ridden, horrific, 
painful rip away from our heart. It doesn't need to be. Sometimes it's just about neatly putting away something until it's time to bring it out again. That's what I'm seeing here. Okay? I'm going to ask you to dip into that right now because it's your way of going forward. Okay? It's also a way of here <clears throat> purifying. I also see the card here, stillness. Stillness is being present and just going with the flow. Okay? So those are some overall energies here. Let's look at the specifics now. My vision is blurry. That was sort of... Uh, I'm also taking that as uh, a sign that some of us may not be able to see things clearly right now, um, which sort of uh, kind of substantiates the need to just kind of go with the flow and take it day by day, okay? When you're not able to see things clearly, it means you need to take the time to really understand. Star, okay? That's healing energy and that's Aquarius season and we're just weeks away from that. I'm an Aquarian too. Let's see here. Knight of Wands. Hanged Man. Judgment. Wow. And we have Knight of Cups, Ten of Cups, Six of Swords, Tower, Fool. All this says is boom shakalaka, okay? I'm going to put that over here. At the bottom of the tarot deck, I do have the Fool. So we are ultimately facing new opportunities in this situation. Whatever it is, it's not asking us to go with the flow. So just to recap, the cards I have here are the Star, Knight of Wands, the Hanged Man, Judgment, Knight of Cups, Ten of Cups, Six of Swords, Tower. It's funny here because I see the Tower and Judgment together. So there is a bit of a, a bit of an emotional shakeup happening here in a situation. But ultimately, again, is a way forward here with the Six of, with the Six of Swords here. But it's a way forward with a rebirth here. So this is where I say take advantage of the new year that we have available to us. This new year is an opportunity for us to really give birth to ourselves. Maybe 2021 was a tower moment in and of itself. I do see this tower connected to a situation in the past, but it's coming back up again very briefly. And it's coming back up again now because it's asking you to reassess where you're at in this situation. Like I said, you may have tucked this away for a time being. Even though many of us are being asked to tuck things away now, you may have tucked this away previously and now it's come back up for you to revisit. We're also got Venus in retrograde, so this could be a love situation right now. Venus is in retrograde until the end of January, which is going to be during Aquarius season. Um, and we've got Mercury going into Aquarius too as it starts its retrograde. So Aquarius season is very significant here. It could be the return of a lover. It could be a return from people from the past. Um, or it could be asking you to revisit, revise, reevaluate. The re in retrograde is very important. Revise, reflect, realign, reevaluate. Um, it's all those different reads, okay? Return. Um, also, I do want to say that, you know, exes, past experiences coming back are not always bad. If it was a toxic experience, then you really don't want to tap into those toxic patterns and get back into something like that again. But really, there's a beautiful lesson in a return from the past. There really is. It's an opportunity for you to really put your healing to the test, maybe learn a few more things that you haven't uh, previously learned with whoever or whatever you're connected to. It's an opportunity to really reassess, okay? Sometimes when we've got our blinders on and we keep going, we don't take enough time to reflect and revise our steps or to even look at where we're going and where we're coming from. Mercury retrograde, Venus in retrograde are gonna be perfect opportunities for you to do that, okay? So the tower could be something from the past coming up. I do see this happening for like the next week or so. So I don't think that this energy is just for today or for the next couple of days, okay? As I've said, the retrogrades are here throughout the next couple of weeks. So I do see that something is coming back up for you to rebirth yourself. The return of something could be the rebirth of something too. So if there's a connection that you thought was dead, it could be resurrected and completely reborn again in a new fashion that you would have never expected. Or somebody is returning from the past and now you have an opportunity to have a conversation and talk about where you've been 
and how you can either grow together or still go down your individual paths, but come to a point of being cordial and understanding of one another. See? See how beautiful this can be? I just got that right now. So when I look at these cards, the star, knight of, wand, knight of wands, hanged man, I am seeing that in the past, um, some sort of, you know, player boy energies, some in and out inconsistent, non-committal energies have definitely created a separation. Um, or a moment of pause. Take it as it will. This is not only coming across as a love reading, but I'm seeing a situation or a resolution was put out of pause um, because somebody decided to back out. Okay, could be an Aquarian, could be a fire sign here. That's what I'm getting. Um, Aquarian specifically in any of the fire signs. So the pause was here. That pause is going to be put to a rest as we get a rebirth in the connection here. And what's up? What's coming now, the return, is bringing in what I see, an offer of love, okay? A gesture to move forward. Move forward towards a happy ending, and that will allow you guys to really move forward. I do see two people here. I didn't think this was going to be a love reading, but it's turning out that way. And I'm seeing here that this olive branch is being offered so that there could be peace in the situation, it might not end up being a love story, even though I do see two people in separation coming back together and finding a way forward. I do see that. I do see that if it's not a love situation, then somebody is extending an olive branch through an apology or through some sort of emotional expression that indicates where they've been this entire time and how they've been learning and how that they and how they want to move forward with you. OK, that's what I'm seeing here. And it's gorgeous because it's all bringing a new way forward. OK. Also, this conversation, now that I have the Hermit here, the Hermit isn't coming on a lot this week. Now that I have the Hermit here, I'm also seeing that this conversation can entice and ignite more healing. Further healing. I feel that there's an enlightenment coming from this moment of rebirth here. An enlightening conversation leads to more healing. It's beautiful. But I see the pause and the suspension coming to a complete end here. So take it as it take it how it resonates. Please comment and let me know um, how this week plays out. But remember, these retrogrades are an opportunity for us to reassess, reevaluate, realign, and relearn what we need to. It's not always bad, okay?